Hey guys, it's Max here and welcome to the latest edition of my WWE Save and TW. Just July 2022. Not far in at all, honest. But no, it's, it's good to be back. Um, before even cracking on, it's, it's really humbling and very much appreciated the, the comments that were made regarding the first episode of Black Man. I didn't realise it was missed by so many people. So uh, thank you very much for that. It's, it's deeply appreciated. And as I say, let's try and make some good stories going forward. Let's try and have a good bit of fun um, booking the save effect we're right through until WrestleMania um, in 2023, uh, sorry. And so it should put us in a good position, hopefully, as I said in some of the comments, trying to eradicate some of the booking mistakes I'd made. Uh, and really just help myself improve as a booker before we get into 2020 when it comes out. Because obviously, with this being such a long save, bloated roster was certainly, it's always been an issue for me, so that's something I want to try and cut down on as well. And knowing that I don't need to go with the intention of just trying to dominate and, and steal every talent, i.e. WWE right now, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens and, and hopefully it is a good ending. That's what I'm hoping for before we start afresh. I say I've not really made my mind up exactly where I'm going to go for 2020. Um, I've certainly put on the Great Dog Software forums places I'd like to do. Like obviously I'd like to do similar, something similar to this, but maybe with AW. But again, there's like so many stuff I want to try in terms of historical mods, whatever gets made and whatever converts successfully. And of course, Seaverse. Of course, that's certainly an option as well. So again, any ideas on that we'd like to see going forward, the, the new game's out, let me know. But today, we're here for the third week of July. It is our pay-per-view on the WWE Network. It is a SmackDown exclusive. It is The Bash. Now this one is another pay-per-view where we're kind of building storylines going forward, but at the same time ending a lot that was already set there so I can get a good run uh, in programs that can last the rest of the summer, SummerSlam, Night of Champions, etc. So we start off with a hype package, it's really documenting the feud we've had going between Daniel Bryan, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion Pete Dunne, and of course the authority figure, our user character Shane McMahon who just does not want Daniel Bryan to be champion. So a highlights package, hyping people up for that gets an A90, which gets the show off this, uh, show off this strong start, gets the crowd hotter, and the storyline advances. So the crowd at the Rogers Centre in Ontario, Canada are pretty happy, 62,000 by the way. Not bad, not too shabby. We have a hype video for our opening contest, it was the best in the world, a rematch between CM Punk and King Neville. I don't know why I just finished a few at one match, so they'll have a, a second match here. Can the baby-faced Neville pick up the victory? against CM Punk, who's insistent that he still is the best in the world. A disappointing B77, let's hope the match is a wee bit better. Slightly. Punk has obviously got a bit of physical decline. But as a decent matchup, Punk wins in 1740 with a Pepsi plunge. You can tell it's an older mod, but uh, good one for him. B plus 83. Neville's not suited to the gimmick. Punk's tiring because of the physical decline. But he is still over, that's the main thing as well. They got the crowd hotter, Neville win 83 and a 76 for CM Punk. So hopefully we'll face him out because uh, I think he's had it quite bad. The same as Styles had it, I think Kofi's got it. Just they've got the over on this, but the, yeah, the in-ring stuff's not quite there. But Punk wins anyway, but gives us another option. In a decent matchup with the Cruiserweight Championship on the line. And we had Leo Rush defeat Aiden English in 11.36. English, of course, accompanied by his wife, Raquel Diaz. And it was a win in 11.36 for the Rush Hour, giving Leo Rush his third title defence. So the reason for this one was really a case of a high competitor to face Leo Rush, because English is an upper mid-card here. Criminally underused talent in real life. Uh, a BA, a 76 rating for Leo Rush, a 66 for Aiden English, but it is just making our champion look really strong. Also booked this in as a storyteller match, I just felt like that was the best we could do here. And yeah, I'm quite happy with our BA. Solid. Next up, we have a hype package for Pentagon Jr. vs Mojo Rawley, B-74. I did say it was released. Turns out that wasn't the case. It was really late when I made that comment. So, I had an idea, as you can see with the advancement of the storyline. So this is going to be for the European Championship, but... I'll let these segments play out 
and I'll give you an idea what I'm going to do because most it will happen off stream because obviously I'm just doing paper or off video so I'm also doing pay-per-view so I'll play the next couple of segments and I'll explain what we're looking to do here so if, if this is what happened in real life I think people would be so raging Decent matchup, Mojo Rawley defeats Pentagon Jr in 944 by pinfall illegally using the ropes for leverage Mojo Rawley wins the European Championship B-73, Pentagon 184 Mojo Rally with 63, and the storyline continues. Fair enough. You're probably wondering why the hell have you just made Mojo Rally win the European title, and why is he beat Pentagon? Then we have Mojo Rally having a, a confrontation with Shane McMahon, both heels, but Mojo Rally's just like, Do you know what? This European Championship is nothing but a piece of trash. I don't want it. So that's an A90. So effectively, after this, we'll be vacating. The European Championship. But then we see Drake Maverick and his Rockstar Spud picture backstage on his cell phone. But, well, he's, he's obviously lurking in the backstage area and he saw what's happened between Mojo Rawley and Shane McMahon. What's going on here? What, what, what could possibly be on Drake Maverick's mind? And that's a B minus 73. So to give you an idea of what I'm looking to do here because it'll take place over the next four or five weeks of non-pay-per-view booking is that the idea that I've got too many championships on Smackdown European Championship was just there and it was just causing a bit of division between that and who should be competing for that and who should be competing for the US title so I thought, you know what again another idea that kind of WWE uses that I'm not to list a lot of ideas for what WWE uses in real life but cool, gives you another option in this when you've not played it for a while and that of course was the creation of the 24-7 Championship so the plan is, Mojo bins off the European title, that doesn't get retired, it just changes what it is, and we'll just use a 24-7 championship, and we'll just have the same crazy stuff that goes on, minus our truth because we'll have our truth but uh, yeah, Drake Maverick can run with that, can have some comedy spots, and yeah, it, to be honest in that way as well, it gives me practice of booking it, if I go ahead and do a a mod as a cha the hardcore championship or if I do a, like a present day with the 24-7 championship is in effect so yeah not good this though not good not painkiller streak don't do it next up we had about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from our crowd it was the Usos defeating Grand Metalik and Lindsay Dorado and the Revival in 1405 when the first team to take the fall was the Revival then it was Grand Metalik and Lindsay Dorado the Usos make the fourth title defence. Of course, they are main event players, but they just serve their purpose as a tag team because they've got so many main eventers. Again, my bad. B-75. This tag division is an issue. Before the show, I had... Well, sorry, before SmackDown, before the show, I had one heel tag team, the Revival. The Bucks have turned... They were due a turn, I just turned them on SmackDown, so that's fine. So still a fairly... Unbalanced tag division. Still getting the issues and the glitch with Scott Dawson improving technical and performance skills every show, but not actually improving. So uh, that'll be one thing that obviously be good when we get to 2020. But that won't be a factor. And I can actually book the revival properly. But after the show, the Usos are celebrating. And do you know what? We had the goddamn AOP come in and they just beat the crap at them. I don't even know how long it's been in save since they were uh, heels previously, but it seems like it's a while since it's allowed to turn. It says that a heel turn is there. It's not the strong suit, but nah, man. EOP, heel, dominant tag team. Only one segment. I don't care. Get them turned. Turn complete went well. Turn complete went well. Boom. We have a tag division. So we're going to have the likes of the Usos. We're going to have American Alpha if I wish to keep them together, although Gable has an about a solo run. We're going to have the team of Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metalik. And the heel side, you're going to have the Usos, sorry, you're going to have AOP, the Bucks, the Revival. We have a tag division. Perfect. Next up, we've got a play, uh, promo from Switchblade, Jay White, B plus 83, just telling people not to overlook him. Paul Heyman, with a few words as well, bigging up his client. And then we have a spectacular over the top entrance from Ricochet, giving you that real big match feel. And it is, to be fair, it is a match where I kind of had a lot of upper mid cards, not doing a lot. At the same time, we need to be looking at where we're going forward. So it is a six-pack challenge. The winner of this match will compete for the World Heavyweight title at SummerSlam. 
So the match didn't have a storyline to it, because it was put together at the last minute, because I didn't have long to book it. But, uh, so just the B77 is a bit disappointing. But he uh, they had good wrestling, and a decent reaction from the crowd, and it was in the Rade CN Almas, so that's how long the save is, he's still called CN Almas. Uh, defeated Johnny Gargaro, Ricochet, Kevin Owens, and uh, Murphy, and Switchblade in 14.42 when Almas defeated Owens with a split legged corkscrew sent on. So this was an opportunity to give a lot of guys that maybe haven't had a, a main event run here. I know certainly Murphy and Switchblade are still getting there. Ricochet, I think, might have had one run, same as, as Almas, but I just, he's somebody I just think is absolutely phenomenal in the ring. He's a really, really great wrestler. Uh, and someday that I think is going to be just massive in the next couple of years for WWE. So really happy to give him the win here. And he will be in the main event. Or one of the main events, sorry. At SummerSlam. So obviously, lack of an associated hot storyline, that was to be expected. They put together at the last minute, but it keeps him happy as well. Keeps morale up and gives the fan a, a massive spectacle. Also must be mentioned as well, I've actually kept it quite realistic. And while my... Um, show times are off. I am still trying to keep Raw and SmackDown and the Women's Revolution to two hours. Uh, yeah, even Raw, believe it or not, because I've screwed about that three hours. And pay-per-views are roughly coming in about 180 minutes, so three hours, so none of your four and a half hours that you get with WWE, although that probably will change at SummerSlam. We'll see. But anyway, Chad Gable against Fergal Devitt coming up for the US Championship in 82 here. Uh, basically in the last show we had Devitt attack. Who's Devitt fighting? Might actually have been Lindsay Dorado actually. Uh, he beat him down after the match. Gable made the save. Just hyping up this match. You can tell it's that Randy Orton was in this at one point because it was still called Strike the Viper. But again, just finishing and concluding the storyline with that A92. Match itself was fantastic. A91. Gable gets it up here again, beating Devitt in 21 27. It's his first title defence, so that'll take Devitt away from the US title picture. And at the same time, hopefully, within the storyline, that Chad Gable. But we'll get a good bit of her up, so happy with that. Main event was great. Great wrestling, good heat. Pete Dunne defeats Daniel Bryan in 22.04, following interference from Shane McMahon. And it is the second title defence of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship for the Bruiserweight. A 90 for Bryan and 92 for Dunne. Bryan's declining with uh, physical decline as well, so it's kind of good to get him away from the championship picture and allow the new generation to kick on. So you've got your main event, or way your main events for SummerSlam. We have Pete Dunne taking on Andrade for the World Heavyweight Championship. So B plus 86. And we conclude the show with Shane McMahon beating the crap out of Daniel Bryan. B plus 88. Pretty good. Forgetting the Undertaker's on my announce team, I always forgot that for SmackDown. And then after it, promo from Shane McMahon that he wants to fight Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam. So there you go, actual forward planning by myself. I'm quite shocked, but as I say, stuff I want to get drilled into the system. So when the new game comes out, it's just seamless. So two matches booked in already for SummerSlam. McMahon versus Bryan. Pete Dunne versus Andrade. And that's just on the SmackDown side of things. Shows an A89. I'm pretty happy with it. That could have obviously been better if it had a storyline. Same with the tag division stuff. But overall, you don't want your full show doing 90s and 100s. It's just, what's the point? You've got to have a, a bit of your show that's uh, workers that are developing it and getting to that next level. As long as your main event's the lover. Which, that could have been better, but Brian's physical decline. Uh, a reason for that. Post match speech, I don't really worry about that because we're in a good position. If it was a lesser company, well, that's our financial resource, I'd consider it, but here, nah, we're, we're, we're cool. So, let's take a wee nosy through a few other things as well, so... Fantastic reviews, that's good to see, 62,000. Gives you context, TNA, did get 10,000 at Destination X, yep, it's still TNA, that's how long ago we started this save, it was still TNA. It was still Destination X. The Bash is now an above average event, 48.24 on the network. And CM Punk doesn't like Drake Maverick. Oh, Punk, how could you, man? How could you? So, momentum's dropping a wee bit, but we're financially dominant, global. Yeah, I don't see no reason why anything should hamper us too much. Consider we've only got a year of the safe to go, then aye, we, we, we should be fine. Just to see, is there anything in terms of items that I need to 
reveal. Oh yes, that's it. So I'm a bit annoyed with Sarah Logan because she's just been a bit of an arsehole. So she's been fine, she'll be jobbed out a little bit. I can't release her because I think she's got connections with someone. I don't have um, the Viking Warriors in this, or the Viking Raider, sorry. Nearly giving them as many bad names as WWE there. But she does have connections with someone and that's why I've not let her go. Uh, nah, is it going to see? I'm going to about 9 million windows here actually. Let's have a wee look actually. Sarah Logan. Nah, I just don't think I wanted her to go. So, ah, cool. She's over, so I'll just job her out. That's fine. Uh, see how she goes through there. Tana Hashi we know about. I released Jeff Hardy. I didn't have MD that I kind of thought would help in terms of, you know, like Matt Hardy's gone, there was no other people he was like pally away, and I just felt like, what's the point? He's he's physical decline, so may as well go. Regal's extended as a, well, it can be used as a uh, every so often wrestler, but yeah, it's just there as an authority figure. And Jushin Thunder Liger as a development coach in Lucha Underground. Since then, we've had obviously Robbie Solar has come out and he's done a shoot interview giving bad words about us, so bad Robbie Solar. And so did Ishimori. So, oh well, maybe I need to utilise my rosters a bit better because a lot of people are saying bad words about my user character. In fact, I uh, didn't want to click that, I want to view profile, thank you. To give you an idea of how badly I've probably handled it, yeah, that's not great. So the people that have completely fell out of me are Taki Kidani, Taji Ishimori, Takahashi Okamura, a hatred of Ryan Drago, so that's um, Simon Gotch, strong dislike of Yunakiyama, strong dislike of Jose Machida, Strong dislike of Evie, so Dakota Kai hates his. Uh, we do have a friendship though with Makoto, with Ross Van Eric. We have a huge dislike of Garv Shira. Similar intention with Viola Muscles. A strong dislike of Sarah Morgan, of course, Crazy Mary Dobson. Similar intention with Switchblade Jay White. What? Strong dislike of Flamita. A strong dislike of Kaho Kobayashi. Just similar intention with just Paul Heyman, Will Osprey, Tauros, and Paul Levesque. So, it's probably something I need to work on. Because, yeah, some of my decisions have kind of left a lot of people pretty pissed off. But at least the good thing is, next up is a co-branded event. Uh, I'm going to keep it how it is just now. So, judging by that, we'll be going SummerSlam, then Evolution, then Night of Champions. So, the... I might, I might conclude the women's brand after Evolution and then merge them into Raw and SmackDown because I just feel like it's too much booking for me. I'd rather just put them into their shows and I'm, I'm sure there's enough depth in the women's divisions where they can carry a couple of tier, not like a main title and a, a lesser title on each brand. So we might have a new women's championship. Um, I'll just try and build one up. The television championship with Rhea Ripley might do that. Uh, and that keeps her really, really strong as someone we can push forward. Uh, Get a good push. Told you she was decent. Uh, she's uh, incredibly talented for the uh, potential she's got is just through the limit. But that's it for this particular episode. Thanks again for taking the time of your day to watch it. If you enjoyed it, a thumbs up is deeply appreciated. If you're new to the channel, if you have to be sub on, it just drops these into your inbox, which will be every so often. I don't have an exact time scale when these are going to go out, but when the new game comes out, 2020, that's when I'll be trying to lesser my FM playtime and more into just TW, so there'll be more regular stuff and not just WWE, there'll be as I say, lots of different companies as we try out a few different things, a few different styles as well. Maybe do something where I book a show and folk can point out what I'm doing wrong because there'll probably still be about a million things I'm doing completely wrong. Well, I learn thanks to you guys in the comments section, so it's much appreciated. But that aside, enjoy the rest of your day. Mind keep an eye out on the Grey Dog software for, uh, website as well, the forums especially, because Adam will give clear updates on the progress of the new game and if there is any delays on its release, he'll post about it. That's how I've been kind of nosing in and out of that, just to get an idea of when it's looking likely. But it all seems good so far for April, but ne never say never, you know what wrestling's like, you know what game development's like, something can change in an instant. So, cheers for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon for SummerSlam. Bye-bye.